Hey, so today we're going to talk about forces and bonding. So we have two distinct forces that deal with chemistry. We have intramolecular forces and we have intramolecular forces. So to understand the effect of this, uh, we, we need to first differentiate between intra and inter. Let's take, for example, water, oh, H2O, right? We have an O, H, O, H. O H O H. So that's what we have so far. Hope you can see that. Pretty easy, right? Okay. So in regards to um, intermolecular forces, we it's pretty you know it's inter means between. So this is like the bonds between a water molecule and a water molecule. Intra is within. So intra is the bonds O and H and O and H within a water molecule. Now this is very important. Intramolecular bonds that hold the atoms in water together are almost 25 times as strong. So it's very very strong um, as the intramolecular bonds. In other words, um, I think it takes like 460 something kilojoules to break um, uh, the intramolecular, but it only takes about 20 to break the bonds between water molecules. Um, let's see here. So, the main difference between solids, liquids, uh, or liquids and gases is therefore based on a competition between the strength of intermolecular bonds and the thermal energy of the system. At a given temperature, substances that contain strong intermolecular bonds are more likely to be solids. So more stronger intermolecular bonds um, more likely to be solidified. Makes sense, right? It's a lot easier to um, break air than it is to break a solid. <laughs> For a given intermolecular bond strength, the higher the temperature, the more likely the substance will be a gas. So, you know, the you know hotter it is, the more likely it is going to be a gas. That's pretty much what that means. Um, so, well, let's just go ahead and talk about um, some of our forces. We have these things called weak intermolecular bonds in liquids and solids called van der Waal forces. These forces can be divided into three categories, dipole-dipole, dipole-induced dipole, and induced dipole-induced dipole. This is um, kind of specific and you don't have to know all of this, but still it's very good to know. So what does dipole-dipole forces mean? Many molecules contain bonds that fall between the extremes of ionic and covalent. The difference between the electronegativities of the atoms in these molecules is large enough that the electrons aren't shared equally, and yet small enough that the electrons aren't drawn exclusively to one of the atoms to form positive and negative ions. The bonds in these molecules are said to be polar because they have positive and negative ends, or poles, and the molecules are often said to have a dipole moment. So something like HCl would have a dipole moment because Cl is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen. The difference between them is, I believe, like a 1.2 or something like that, um, 1.2 or 1.3 off the top of my head. So it's a very polar molecule. The dipole-dipole interaction in HCl is relatively weak, only 3.3 kilojoules per mole. The covalent bonds between hydrogen and chlorine atoms in HCl is 130 times stronger. So, like before, I've, I've noted that the intramolecular is a lot stronger. The HCl, that actual bond of HCl, is a lot stronger than the intermolecular bonds, like dipole-dipole interaction. So. I hope you guys kind of understand that. The force of attraction between HCl molecules is so small that hydrogen chloride boils at negative 85 Celsius. And remember, in regards to intermolecular forces, um, the only thing that you really need to worry about 
is hydrogen bonding because hydrogen bonding with FON, FON, that's going to be really the difference maker in a lot of these cases of um, whether or not it's going to be stronger or not. Let's take a look at dipole-induced dipole. So dipole-induced dipole is kind of like what would, what would happen if we mix like HCl with argon, which has no dipole moment. The electrons on an argon, argon atom are distributed much, uh, like are relatively distributed around the um, nucleus of the atom because, well, it's a noble gas. So, but these electrons are in constant motion. So I don't want you guys to think that, like, you know, just because it's noble gas, it just sits there. But when an argon atom comes relatively close to a polar HCl molecule, the electrons can actually shift to one side of the nucleus to produce a very small dipole moment that lasts only for an instant. So. Likewise, the um, intermolecular bonds of this is very, 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 very weak. By distorting the distribution of electrons around the argon atom, the polar HCl induces a small dipole moment on this atom, which creates a weak dipole-induced dipole force attraction between the HCl molecule and the argon atom. Again, the force of this is very weak. The bond energy is only about 1 kilojoule per mole. Induced dipole, induced dipole forces. Now, neither dipole dipole nor dipole induced dipole can really explain the fact that helium becomes liquid at temperature below 4.2 Kelvin. By itself, a helium atom is perfectly symmetrical, right? But movement of the electrons around the nuclei of a pair of neighboring helium atoms can become synchronized so that each atom simultaneously obtains an induced dipole moment. These fluctuations in electron density occur constantly in creating an induced dipole-induced dipole force of attraction between pairs of atoms. As might be expected, this force is relatively weak in helium, only about 0.076 kJ per mole, but atoms or molecules become more polarizable as they become larger because there are more electrons to be polarized. It has been argued that the primary force of attraction between molecules in solid iodine, I2, and in frozen CCl4 is induced dipole induced dipole attraction. I hope you guys understand all that. It's, pro it's pr um, kind of specific, but you know, I kind of want to give you guys a good little overview on intermolecular forces. And now, let's see if I can get you guys acquainted with some of our intramolecular forces. Hold on one second, guys. So with regards to intramolecular forces, this is stuff that you guys have been talking about all year. Um, ionic bond, a bond between which two ions are formed from the transfer of electrons from one to another. The bond is held together by the force of attraction from the opposite charges of the ions formed. So in other words, NaCl becomes Na plus and Cl minus. Another one would be covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is due to a sharing of electrons. Uh, covalent compounds cannot dissociate when they dissolve in water. This makes them poor conductors of electricity, unlike ionic. So, I think that's about as specific as she'll get. Um, polar versus nonpolar bonds, stuff like that, you guys should be able to understand. Um, now, I know there was a problem on here that you you said that, um, Jennifer, that you did not understand the pi bonds or something like S and P and D and F, stuff like that. In regards to, um, actually, I'm about out of time on this one, but let me let me start a new video and then I will talk about the, the sigma and the pi and D and F and stuff like that, okay?